So this is the first test with the Final Cut Pro multicam feature. That's the 13 with the Rode mic. This is my 14 Pro in my hand. And this is the new iPad that is running Final Cut. So if you look at it, you can see both camera angles are being recorded at the same time totally wirelessly. Now, if you want to monitor audio, you can, but you have to plug in a wired headset. So you can't monitor with speakers. You can monitor full screen, as in if you push the button here, you can just see what it looks like. And you can also like control the camera. So you can tap for focus. You can adjust your exposure and your white balance. You can also see the audio coming through that camera over there. Or you can go back to this one and then you can see the same thing here. And obviously this looks pretty bad. So I'm going to hide that because we're recording the screen with the screen. I know this is not perfect, but I'm just doing tests. After you stop the recording here, what I think is going to happen is that it goes into editing mode. So I'm not sure if I can still show that, but I'm recording the screen. So hopefully there is enough audio in there that I can actually do that. So let me hit and it will stop on both automatically, as you can see. So now I'm not even recording. So looking at the screen, I can hit done and it's going to make a timeline for me. As in, yeah, it says if I click here, it shows media transfer. So it is copying the actual full resolution file from the phones to this iPad. Because when it's streaming, it's only streaming like a lower quality footage. So this is the clip that we just recorded. The first one was a mistake, so I had to stop this. But this is the actual one that got recorded. And in here, you can see the different angles that are you can switch to. So I'm pretty sure that this should be on the timeline. And as you go, um, let me see if there's a way to switch to multicam. Uh, picture in picture. Um, so how do I make cuts? That's the question here. Because of multicam. Yes. So if you click multicam on the bottom, as you go, and you can technically play this back in real time, then I should be able to just push this button. And yes, as you can see, it, it does add a cut and it immediately switches to it. So this is actually really fluid. Obviously, we have effects and playback. Uh, playback options to go from performance. Um, video scope, which would be like having a histogram or a vector scope. Uh, I kind of like waveform, like I would definitely do that. If this would be adjustable, that would be good, but I guess it, it is not. So I just have to work with what I got. I may go to just a normal histogram, but that is, the waveform I think looks better. So let's keep going here and then now this is exactly what I'm going to do as in I'm going to edit this video and try to put the screen record in here because I want to see if I can sync that in based on strictly the audio. So we are in Final Cut right now, and I have the original multicam that was the two angles, and I added the screen record from the iPad, which was actually very easier than I thought it would be. This is the um, screen record from the iPad, and this is the multicam. So when you go into multicam and, and you drop the multicam on your timeline, I'm going to delete that gap and start at the beginning. Uh, you can see that all the angles show up here. Now, normally this was only the first two, but if you click edit angles, you can actually add the third angle, which is just called untitled angle. I can just rename it to 
screen record um screen record and when you push the sync button on the bottom left based on audio it was able to actually sync it together so i mean there are small glitches in the app because the waveform doesn't show up all the time but these are the two shots from the two cameras and this is the screen record that i started earlier so and it was actually still running after i stopped the the multicam so i have all these three i probably will trim this down because the beginning is useless so i have three angles and if i go back here what i can do is i can actually start editing by finding where it starts and just trimming that down we're going to move this all back to the end, to the beginning and then you can see that on the bottom it shows the three angles and you have some audio controls here so this little icon you can determine which audio track you want to use or if you want to use it at all so i don't want to use my 14 pro because that had no microphone. The 13 Pro had the Rode Wireless Go attached, so I soloed this. Solo means it's just the only thing that will ever play. I could put it on on if I also want the screen recording to have audio. So I should be able to do this. And then this one's currently off, but play this angle's audio only when its video is active. So I should be able to do that as we go and switch to the, the individual clips if I want to show that at the end. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it on off and this I'll probably leave on solo. So when you're in here, you can start playing your video and then you make cuts, but then here you see the audio stopped and the audio stopped because the clip ended so after this you only have the screen recording but the screen recording will only show up if you i just made a cut so i'm gonna do that so if i do this to on see how it's mixing the two so if i have both audio clips on from the road from iPhone 13 and then screen record, then it makes the audio so you can continuously go. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to turn this off. I go to the end and I'm going to make a cut here. And then we can change the audio to um, Yeah, and then just actually change the audio on this one. So I'm going to turn it to on. And then you can actually hold this, long press and select uh, expand audio components. And then that way you can see what the actual, what actually is happening on the timeline. So, and you can see that there is audio technically from the iPhone 13, which you can disable. And then I'm going to expand this one too, but this one is only the iPhone 13. So if I make cuts in this and I actually do like a small edit that's going to end up in the YouTube video, then, then I'm going to continue with the screen record here. And this is the screen record uh, microphones from the iPad <clears throat> because I can't use the Rode if it's connected to the iPhone 13 as those stopped recording when I pushed the stop button. So I have this screen record. And after the end, I'm gonna add the I'm gonna add the new screen record that I'm doing right now to the end to finish up this video. I just finished up this edit and I know it feels like we're you're watching Inception because this threw me off big time too while I was doing this. The fact that I was recording the recording and then multicamming it and then putting the screen record back, but I was talking about it earlier because it was actually happening live. So this edit is like a little chaotic, but this is the first time I'm using this. So like, I'm not even sure if I touched 
all the right buttons and stuff. But I was able to make a video like on the fly with zero effort. Like literally, I haven't watched anything about this. I knew it existed, but I couldn't use the app. So this is the first time I'm using Final Cut on the iPad. I was able to do the live stream multicam thing with two iPhones. I was able to figure out how to use the audio from the microphones that I want. And I was also able to just add manual clips from the screen recording that I did on the iPad while it was doing the live stream and then sync that and then record a small, small tutorial, essentially, after the fact, I was just recording the screen with like the edits and how to do this stuff. That's what's in the end. But it still feels a little weird because it's like I'm, I'm doing this like time loop because you're, you already know that I did this, but then you're just seeing it on the screen record. So, I mean, it's just messing with my mind a little bit. But Final Cut Pro so far is good. There are some limitations though. For example, if you stop the recording on one of the phones while the multicam is running, you cannot restart it. You have to stop the whole project and restart it again. I feel like that's because it would lose the time code, so it can't accurately put it back in sync. So that is a massive limitation. So this wouldn't work for a project where you periodically want to do short clips but have a timeline, like a BTS for a full day. But this will work for, let's say, a two, three, four, five person like podcast or something or an interview or some live stream that you want to do and you actually have like microphones running on each camera like each iPhone will have their own like road so when you're switching you know like not live but like after when you're cutting the person who's speaking would be the one that has the main audio in focus or if you want to have another person you can just manually turn it on now I really do wish that there would be a mute button next to like the cut or the split or the trash can when you select an audio. Because right now, I cannot mute an audio channel. If I have a solo track that goes all the way, but I have multiple cuts in there, but on another video, like I have the audio from the, the second video, and I wanna show that second video, I'm showing the second video, and I want the audio to come from that second video, not the main microphone. It's really difficult to do that because the only way to do it is that I have to manually click on every single audio piece if I made multiple cuts and then hit the volume and then pull down the adjuster to the minimum, like essentially muting the clip. But there's no button, there's no disable. If you hit disable, it disables everything, like the video and all the attached clips. There's no ungroup, like an actual final cut where you can separate your audio track from the video. That's, that's not a thing or at least I haven't found it. So when I was doing the screen record, I was still using the microphone, the Rode microphone that I'm wearing because the camera was still rolling. This camera was still rolling. So I had better audio throughout that section and I was trying to use that audio. But when I pushed stop recording on this phone and the other phone, and then only the screen record was running, obviously I lost audio from the Rode. So inside, then I had to switch the audio to the screen record. But what happened is that it enabled the audio for the screen record even before the cut. So while my road was also having audio playing on the timeline, the screen records audio also turned on underneath it because there was just no separator. Like there's no way to do it. So I had to click on every single one of them and I had to pull it down to zero. And I had to pull it down to zero so the bad audio coming from the iPad's microphone compared to the Rode would not be heard because it created a little like echo delay kind of thing in the background. So this is probably something I have to spend more time with to figure out, but so far I think it's 100% usable. And I'm expecting Apple to release updates to this because this has been out for like a week or two, like, like it's new, like it's not expected to be perfect. Everything feels like it's Final Cut. Like, the user interface and everything, it just feels like I'm on the Mac. It is limited, but it looks the same, it feels the same, it's fast. And I was doing 4K 30 with two cameras plus the screen record. It didn't even stutter once. The playback was fluid every single time. There's, there's like literally no stutters. So I'm thinking that this is very usable for small content creators 
100% can replace cameras if you have enough lighting. Now, obviously, you have to have enough lighting because we're talking about iPhones. This might not even look good um, here. Uh, this is the front-facing camera of my iPhone 13, which is, I guess, you know, a couple years old. But I have lights on. I have lights over there. I have a light over here. So, like, this isn't, like, your normal situation. But if you're a content creator, you probably have lights. So, I'm going to drop this at the end of the video, which will make it more crazy and inception-y because the, the, I'm just talking about what I, you already watched. But for a first project, I'm impressed. So, I'm going to do more testing and I'm going to come back with a somewhat more structured video, maybe even shooting it on like an actual camera, like I'm just going to set up my FX3s and stuff, so I can actually shoot all the three screens right next to each other and like explain what the hell is actually happening, because you do have to kind of wrap your mind around it to get like a feel of like, what is this workflow? So anyway, thanks for watching. If you're interested in Final Cut Pro Camera, try it. It is good and it is free. If you ever want to do multicam with stuff like this or just quick YouTube videos and you don't want to build like a full set, you don't have like professional cameras or you just don't want to spend the hours, you know, all the builds and breakdowns. And if you want to edit fast, I recommend trying it because this will probably make your workflow a hundred times faster and eliminate a lot of like thinking and the tedious parts of like a normal like video production. So if you just want to make quick videos like daily YouTube videos and stuff just to get into the habit of it, start with this.